Hello and welcome back people. My name is Reza Afshar, this is Chris Bridgen and this is a follow-up video from the Shroud of Turin. Yeah guys, so on the 19th of February uh, we put up a video talking about the Shroud of Turin and all the evidence related to it. And today's video is a follow-on from that. Now if you haven't seen uh, part one then please click on the link in the description box below because there have been some outstanding finds regarding the Shroud. Then come back to this video guys, you won't be sorry. Okay, moving on, we've had some great feedback uh, regarding the Shroud video, but in this video we want to address the main concern that people had about the Shroud because the scriptures tell us that there was another piece of cloth with the Shroud. And this is John uh, chapter 20, verse 7. It says, And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but was wrapped together in a place by itself. So, we have the burial cloth, what we believe to be the Shroud of Turin, and the cloth that was wrapped around Jesus' head. So where is the face cloth? The face cloth is believed to have been found, and it's called the Sidarium of Oviedo, and here is a picture of it. Now it's a piece of cloth measuring uh, 84 by 53 centimetres, and according to investigations done, on the sidarium, it was folded over when placed on the face. And this is why you can see a symmetry of the bloodstains. Now from investigations done on the cloth, it has been shown that the frontal stains on the sidarium show 70 points of coincidence with the Shroud of Turin. And the rear side of the sidarium shows 50 points of coincidence with the Shroud of Turin. So the only possible conclusion is that the Sidarium covered the same face as the Turin Shroud. Also, the blood on both the Shroud and the Sidarium belongs to the same group, namely A, B. So again, they both match up. But there is more, guys. Next point. The Shroud has an image of a man that we believe to be Jesus imprinted on it. So why doesn't the face cloth also have an e image of Jesus face. It is believed that the Sidarium was only used to cover Jesus face when he died as Jewish tradition demands that if a face of a dead person was in any way beaten it should be covered with a cloth and it was then later taken off and placed to one side in the tomb or sepulchre as it says again in John 21st 7 and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Now, there are scientific reasons to show that the Sidarium was only on Jesus' head for a short period of time, so let's take a look. Now, although the Sidarium has 125 points that match up with the Shroud of Turin, it has different facial stains than the Shroud. Now on the shroud there is a stain on the forehead in the shape of an inverted three, but not on the sidarium. So the sidarium was on his face at a different point in time. Also the stains on the sidarium were made by a less viscous mixture. They were one part blood and six parts fluid. And this was believed to have been from the build up of fluid in the lungs as a result of the crucifixion that consequently came out through the nostrils. And this water and blood mix ties in with scripture. Uh, John 19 verse 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And there are also smaller stains at the side of the main group. It would appear that the sidarium was pinned to the back of the head and that these spots of blood were from small, sharp objects, which would logically be the crown of thorns that caused this type of injury all over Jesus' head. Okay, another point. Uh, a specially modelled head was made to reconstruct this process of staining, and the experiments with the model head and the study of the stains show that when the man died, his head was tilted 70 degrees forward, and 20 degrees to the right. And this ties in with the fact that the sidarium wasn't wrapped entirely round the head because the right cheek was almost touching the right shoulder. 
and this suggests that the sudarium was put in place while still on the cross. The stains on the sudarium are also superimposed on each other. That's one on top of another with the different outlines clearly visible. And this means that the first stain had already dried when the second stain was formed. Then the second stain dried and then the third stain was formed. And there is a reason for these different stains. Please guys, this is really, really important now. The experiments also made it possible to calculate the time elapsed between the formation of each stain. Now, as the sudarium was believed to be in place while the body was still on the cross, this is when the first stain was formed. The second stain was made about an hour later, possibly when the body was taken down from the cross, causing more fluids to come out from the nose. The body then stayed there for around 45 minutes. The third stain was possibly made when the body was lifted from the ground before being placed in the tomb or sepulchre. Uh, the sudarium would then be removed and placed to one side in the tomb. And again, this lines up with scripture. The stains were also studied from the point of view of anthropology. And the conclusion was that the face that had been in contact with the sudarium had typically Jewish features a prominent nose and pronounced cheekbones. And pollen samples taken from the sudarium found species typical of Jerusalem. And on top of that, guys, its history is very well documented. Its origins can be traced back to ancient Israel. And there's a link uh, in the description box if you want to know more about the history. So for me, guys, the evidence is, uh, is overwhelming. It's, it's amazing what they've done in, in, in scientifically looking into uh, this, this face cloth and how it ties in with the Shroud uh, of Turin. Um, overwhelming. I mean, it's, I'm kind of mind blown in you know, the amount of evidence that, that they've got from both uh, these pieces of cloth, the Shroud uh, and, the, and the Sudarium. So guys, if you haven't seen the Shroud video, please go and watch that because that is mind blowing as well. It really is. And these are, are God-given signs. You know, the, the apostles, the disciples, you know, when Jesus had risen, they kept these, these linen cloths and this face cloth because they knew it was precious. And, it's, and I believe it's been handed down through the ages. Mm. And it's been kept because it is it's a testimony of a Jesus, testimony Christ. Of Jesus testimony. Christ's yeah. death. And also that mm. burst of light mm. through the shroud, is a, is, to me, is a testimony of his resurrection. Um, so, so, you know... Look into these things more, guys. There's links in the description box uh, to this face cloth and also look at the other video um, because, you know, if you haven't seen it, you've got to. You've got to. But also, Chris, if you could explain, you know, if people are on the fence and they're not sure, it's OK. Yeah, if they're on, you know, guys, if you believe, then you, then you believe. You're saved. You're saved. Um, for me, this is something that deepens my faith. It lifts my faith because it's adding to it. It's like anything really, you yeah. know, if, if, if someone has a, a testimony of Jesus Christ and they've seen Jesus Christ in a vision, that deepens my faith. It adds to it. Yeah. It's not based upon it, but it adds to it. Yeah. And uh, for those out there, you know, think of it like that. Think of it as adding to your faith. And if, if you don't believe in Jesus, you know, and you're feeling a kind of a pull in that direction, then, then please, you know, come forward and, and do look into this because there's, there's lots of people who have had lots of testimonies of Jesus. This this is a testimony of what Jesus uh, did when he died and rose and, and other people have other testimonies of, of him now in this day and age of seeing him, visions. So there's so much out there, guys. There's so much evidence if you want to look at it like that. So many signs. And we had over a thousand, I think 1,300 comments on the last video on the Shroud. Yeah. Um, and many, many people have come to faith through that testimony of the Shroud. Uh, Mm. It's, it, you mm. know, it has brought so many people to faith. But like Chris just said, it's a testimony. It's like, you know, I've had wonderful uh, Christian testimonies on how they have come to faith. And mm. my faith is deepened based on that. But I still come to Jesus Christ myself and I receive Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. You know, it's not pinned on their testimony. It's the same with the shroud. You know, it's just, it deepens it's a signpost, my faith. It's a signpost pointing yeah. to Jesus. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think of it like that, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also, uh, what I want to say is uh, there were some other questions from the Shroud that we'll be answering in another video. And uh, any questions we get on this, again, we'll be answering in another video. So we'll try and put them together at the end of uh, another video that we do, and we'll answer all those, uh, all those things for you. So um, stay tuned for that. Yeah, if you've got questions, 
we're going to answer it in the ne in the next video. Yeah, and, yeah. Because um, yeah. there's just too much information yeah, otherwise. Cool. Um, Great. Well, excellent video, guys. Like to hear from you. Put your comments uh, below. Love to hear. We do go through each and and every comment. So please get in touch. Uh, if you've even like come to faith because of the shroud, you know that would be wonderful. Love to hear from you. Mm. Um, any scriptures that you have, again, put them below, and um, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, and also I want to say as well, guys, if you if you don't know Jesus and you want to ask Jesus into your life, then do it. Do it today. There, there's a prayer. We'll do it now, guys. Follow me. If you really want to ask Jesus into your life, let's do it now. Um, repeat this prayer after me, uh, dear Lord Jesus. Please hear my prayer. I know that you gave your life for me. And I know that you're alive today. Please forgive my sins. Come into my heart and make your home with me. Thank you for being my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen.